Good morning, and welcome to worship as we celebrate together the second Sunday in Advent here as we continue the march towards Christmas and the welcoming of Jesus. Uh, this morning we're going to begin with our opening hymn, which invites Jesus to come and come quickly. Our hymn, if opening hymn is going to be number 350, Come, Thou Precious Ransom, Come. Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 50, titled, God Himself is Judge. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes, he does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire, around him a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above, and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me, my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds. For the very beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and its fullness are mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and perform your vows to the Most High, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. We continue with the Kyrie on page 186. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for the second week of Advent is from the prophet Malachi, the fourth chapter. This is titled, The Great Day of the Lord. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and just decrees that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children, and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual for today is drawn from Psalm 50. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes, 
he does not keep silence. Gather to me my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Our epistle for today is from the book of Romans, chapter 15. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant of the circumcised to show God's truthfulness, in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles, and sing to your name. And again it is said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples extol him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles. In him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the Alleluia on page 190. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, There will be signs in sun and moon and stars and on the earth, distress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and of the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with the dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We continue by confessing our common faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life 
everlasting. Amen. Our hymn of the day is number 336. Uh, Lo, he comes with clouds descending.
grace and peace in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our sermon message for this morning is titled, The Time of Redemption, and it's based on this gospel reading from Luke 21, the words of Jesus. Nowadays, nearly everyone is excited for Christmas, regardless of their religion or upbringing. Well, why? Well, because of gifts, food, drink, and in years without COVID, the company of family and friends. And some know the reason for this season is the birth of Jesus Christ. And in fact, uh, there are many children who write letters to the infant Jesus for their gifts. And even the secular world welcomes old jolly Saint Nick, the priest from the fourth century land of Turkey who gave presents to the children of poor families. But in our worship, our approach is different than the world around us. For us, this is not a holiday season that occurs one day a year and then we return to our work and daily life. No. Not only do we remember a past event, the birth of the infant Jesus in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, on the contrary, we reflect on a hope that continues throughout our lives until the second coming of our Lord. And our text speaks of this second coming. Our Lord came the first time in humility to fulfill the covenant that God had made with the people of Israel, the descendants of Abraham. In the Old Testament, the books of the Bible written before the birth of Christ, the focus is on this covenant with God's own people. But from the beginning, when God promised Abraham this great nation, his descendants that would number more than the greater than the sands on the, on the beach. God promised this savior to Adam that, uh, sorry, God promised that from his descendants, a savior would come from all nations. And God had promised this savior to Adam and Eve right at the fall, the first humans back in Genesis 3.15. And today in our epistle lesson, St. Paul says, and again he says, rejoice Gentiles with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all the Gentiles, and give glory to all the peoples. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will come out and he will rise to reign over the Gentiles. The Gentiles will wait on him. Now, Gentiles is one of these words that really doesn't exist outside of the church. Gentiles is a word that means those who are not Jews. So the promise of the new covenant in Christ is for all nations, including us here. The hallmark of this new covenant is not circumcision as it was in the old covenant, but the baptism that you received when you were brought into the family of God, whether that be as a child or as an adult. And no matter our race or tribe, we are all Abraham's heirs in the water linked to the word of God. Therefore, our hope is not only for Christmas this year and next year, but for the day when Christ comes again in glory. Because in baptism, we are also heirs of eternal life that Christ won for us on the cross. He was punished for our sins on the cross, but let us share in his resurrection from death because of baptism. Christmas points to Holy Week. Jesus was born in this world to suffer and die on the cross. And he began his way to the cross with his baptism in the Jordan River by John the Baptist. And like the baptism of Jesus, the Father's voice spoke from the heavens and the Holy Spirit descended in the form of the dove in each and every Christian baptism. The Father and Son send the Holy Spirit to live in us. And then Jesus, in this gospel reading, tells them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they spring up, seeing them, you know that summer is near. So also you, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Jesus used the fig tree example because this tree bears its first fruit in late spring. But the largest harvest comes in summer. And so... The resurrection of Jesus was the first, and then our resurrection 
And when we see signs in the moon on the or signs in the sun on the moon and in the stars and on earth and anguish of nations and confusion, the roaring of sea and the waves, men fainting because of the fear and expectation of things that will come upon the earth, because the powers of the heavens will be moved. When we witness that, we will rejoice because our redemption is near. So when others point to the world around us and worry that the end of the world is coming based on wars, pandemics, other issues that show up constantly in our sinful, broken world, we can hold our heads up, praying that Jesus' return comes soon. And the end of the world will not be realized before the Son of God will come in the clouds. Therefore, when the world around us is locked in fear, panic, anguish, uncertainty, distrust, we trust in the promises of God that we already have in baptism. Therefore, says St. Paul, we should not live in gluttony and drunkenness, but keep alert for the coming of the Lord. And so we pray, come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the offertory. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. We continue with prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For steadfast, steadfastness in the word of Christ, our incarnate judge, that ever mindful of his coming, we may live in harmony with one another and together glorify him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Spirit, that by God's word, he would search our hearts to root out all evil that would lead to strife and discord, so that we may be at peace with all people. And for zeal for the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which alone can bring peace beyond understanding, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in need, those in grief, those who are suffering and those who pray for respite from their burdens, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Trusting in our Lord's promises, we are bold to pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. We continue now with our closing hymn, hymn number 344, on Jordan's banks that bank the Baptist cry.
much for coming and worshiping with us this morning. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.